tonight is a uh, special night. You guys can have a seat if you want uh, for a second. I I'm not going to share a lot right now, but um, obviously this is, I think Caleb mentioned, this is our last well before the end of the year. And uh, it's the last one before Christmas. So we're coming to the end of the Advent season. Um, and uh, that ends fr the Friday night right before Christmas. So um, we thought... Let's mix it up a little bit tonight, and um, they're going to do some more worship. They're going to do some more Christmas songs, but I thought, well, let's read. Um, we're going to read the Christmas story. So for you online, sorry the TV's not in view for you, but uh, um, just follow along with us. We're reading from Luke chapter 2, which I think is probably the best description. Um, you can find it in Matthew chapter 2 as well, the birth of Jesus, but... Luke chapter 2 is really, um, well, it's my favorite, so I get to choose. So uh, we're reading from Luke chapter 2 tonight. Um, so you follow along with me. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went out to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He went there to be registered with his wife, with Mary, his betrothed, meaning she was going to be his wife, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes laid in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. When the angels heard, went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened has known, made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering their heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying Praising God for all that they had heard and seen is as it had been told them. Would you pray with me real quick and then we'll worship some more? Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this season that we get to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that tonight to what we have already sung and what we have read that we have worshipped you. center of everything that we do. We want you to be the the, 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 the the only one that gets any recognition from anything that we do. We're not here to promote anything else or anyone else. We're here to promote you. Proclaim you. We pray that you would just be with us the rest of this night. So as I was kind of preparing this week, 
I kind of made a point to read the Christmas story kind of over and over just to kind of do what Darren was just saying, seeing it from a different perspective. And I saw some things differently, but something that my pastor at our church has been saying is that whole honored guest. And just that when we're celebrating Christ's birthday, I think oftentimes, I know for me, I've invited Christ to his birthday, and I say, go ahead and sit in the corner while I open gifts for myself, and I do things that glorify me or that I have fun with. And it's, you know, it's like, when have we ever invited someone to their own birthday party? And said, okay, please don't participate in what we're doing. And so as I was kind of pondering that and thinking through that, um, this song is super simple. It came to mind. I was like, we need to. I want to sing this as a group. And it's so simple. It just says, oh, come let us adore him. And there's a couple different verses that we'll sing together. Um, but let's just kind of make this our prayer tonight, but also the battle cry as we walk into this week to see Christmas differently. So let's just sing this together. Y'all can have a seat. I want to. I want to just um, paint a little picture for you from the Christmas story. That, we're going to finish up Galatians six a little bit, sort of. But um, you know, we were in Galatians, so we're we're still going to kind of be there. But I want to just finish up briefly. We won't. We won't be here long. I say that we may be here. You know, I, it's weird when you have when you have notes and you're going to try to go off script. You don't really have a lot of notes. It could either be bad or good. I mean, it could be like either two minutes or two. It won't be two hours, but you know, you get, you get the point, right? Let me think, paint this picture. We read the Christmas story. We sang that great Christmas um, hymn, Christmas song. And then, but before that, we sang the room, make room for Jesus. And I don't know. I, I know that that was divinely inspired. And I know that they, Caleb chose that song for tonight. And, but I, I want to I focus on that because that's really the direction that I want to talk about the Christmas story. When we read through the Christmas story, did you notice anyone... In particular, and again, let me just say, I don't want to read too much into Scripture or read something that's not there, okay? I never want to do that. I never want to imply my own thoughts into a passage of Scripture that, you know, the thought that, you know, let's, it must be this way because it didn't say it wasn't. We don't know that. But did you read, did you see anything in that Scripture as you've read through or as we read through the night, tonight, Luke chapter 2, did we read anything about any of the people in the town doing anything sinful? I mean, we really didn't read anything, right? But they missed the coming Messiah, didn't they? They missed him. When you think about it, the only people that caught that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, entered this little remote village that very few people knew about. The only people that knew about it were his mother, his father, and a few shepherds. Think about it. We're in Christmas season, right? How many have been to the mall lately? Close to to buying stuff for the, yeah. So, uh, I know it's different because we're in COVID season and all that, but malls are still kind of packed, aren't they? It's busy, right? There's a lot of people out shopping. They're just, they're, everybody is out. Everybody is, is out buying stuff, and there's busyness happening. That's what was going on here, not because it was Christmas season, but if you go back to the town of Bethlehem at this time, remember it said that a lot of people were in town. They were coming to the town of Bethlehem. Why? Because they had to, everybody had to go back to their village, where the city where they, their family was from because there was a census being taken. And, and this was a big deal. Everybody had to, so there were the, the town was buzzing with people. I'm sure the storekeepers were out sweeping off the sidewalks which they didn't have sidewalks but you know they were sweeping the dirt away from the dirt you know in front of their stores or whatever I don't know what they were doing but they were getting everything ready because people were coming to town that weren't normally there 
They were busy, right? Lot, lots of hustle and bustling, and they were, just, they, were, they were just a lot of people in town that weren't normally there. So there was a lot of busyness happening. And there's nothing wrong with being busy. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's exactly what happens to us today, isn't it? We get busy doing those things. And listen, I I love giving gifts. I love receiving gifts. And I'll give you my sizes later if you want. But I'm just saying, I, I, I love all of that. I think there's nothing wrong with those traditions But how often do the traditions or the busyness of the season, how often do we allow it to cause us to miss making room for Jesus? As Caleb just mentioned, and as a song that we sang earlier. Man, I love that song. It really hit me. I, I, I don't, because, because that's what this whole story to me is all about. Joseph and Mary traveled from Nazareth, which was about 90 miles. It took them approximately three days more than likely to get to where they were going because that's the distance that it took in those days and 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 the messiah you know this he was born in the most unlikely of all places I, i read something earlier i don't know if it was today or yesterday but they the the it was a commentary on on a on this Bible reading plan and the, the commentary or the, the devotion part said, you know, the, it would make more sense if like if King Herod would have been the, the you know, the king of kings because he was the king, right? I mean, that would make more sense to the people back in those, those days. He was a king. He was, he lived in the palace. He was over the, on the throne. But God doesn't always make sense, does he? Not to make sense to us he does things his own way and he sends the messiah his own son in the lowliest of places and and did you notice that the again the person that understood jesus the messiah the best at that moment was a teenager in a stable because there wasn't any room for them in the inn. And the stable is not as glamorous as you may think. It, it wasn't really a barn necessarily. I mean, I guess it was it seconded as a barn, but it was a cave, basically. Most, most scholars believe it was like a cutout, and it was a cave that some animals lived in. That's where the Savior of the world entered the world in the presence of a teenager who was probably scared to death a carpenter who was I guarantee you I've been there he was scared to death he didn't know what to do and shepherds and that's it everybody else in the town they missed it and and it doesn't appear that they missed it because they were doing things sinful, like I said earlier. It doesn't look that way. We, can't, we don't see that in Scripture. We don't see that they were doing things sinful. And, and, and they knew that the Messiah was coming. They had the Old Testament. They knew they were waiting for this promised Messiah. They knew he would be coming. And he entered their village on that night, their town on that night, and they missed it. Not because they were doing bad things, but because they weren't looking. And I think to myself, how many times has God given me an opportunity to be a witness to somebody, to share Christ with somebody, those God moments, you know what I'm talking about, those moments when God, I mean, it is just, it's, 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 I'm, it's flat given to me, laid in my lap, and I miss the moment. Not because I'm necessarily doing something sinful, but because I'm not looking for it. I'm not paying attention. I'm not looking for Christ in those moments. I'm not looking. The Savior of the world comes into the world, and the only ones who knew it were a few carpenters, or a few shepherds, and a carpenter, and a teenage mother. And that's it. Nobody else saw it because they weren't looking, they didn't make room for Jesus. And I think, is it really any different today? 
we're busy at Christmas, do we notice him? Do we make room for Christ in this season? I was thinking earlier, when I get busy, and Christmas, you know, we always talk about, and I don't know, if, I don't know why we talk about this, it's not really biblical, but, you know, Christmas is a time to, it's supposed to be a time to rest and relax. Where did that come from? I don't, because that's never been Christmas that I know of. It's always kind of been crazy, right? I mean, it's your visiting family, and there's no resting there. Right? I mean, we're, most of us have to travel if we visit family or things like that. It's just kind of a crazy time. So, so we, get, we get busy during the Christmas season, and, and we just kind of miss some opportunities. And when I get busy, I get exhausted. Like, when I'm, when I'm just busy like that, when I'm doing those things, I get tired. I get weary. And remember the very first passage that we... I'm sure you do. The first passage that we shared when we started this series in Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, verses 9, verse 9 and 10 says, Let us not grow weary of doing good. Why? Because for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. You see, sometimes busyness causes us to become weary. And because we're busy, too busy, we miss Christ, or we miss those God moments. We miss him in uh, these encounters that we could have with him, or that he's wanting to have with us. And because we get busy, then we also get weary. And I don't, if you're anything like me, when I get weary, I miss those moments because I don't want them. I, I don't look for those moments when I'm weary. When I'm, when I'm busy, I don't look for them just because I'm busy, and I'm just busy, and I don't got time for that. When I'm weary, I don't look for those moments because honestly, can I just be fleshly here? I don't want them. I don't want to take the time because I'm weary. I'm exhausted because I've allowed the world to set the pace for me instead of what I know God has called me to do. We've let busyness cause us to get weary. But look what, it, Galatians, what Paul writes in Galatians 6, verses 17 and 18. I hope this will tie in. He says, from now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. Here's what I think he's saying and what it's saying for us today. Don't let anything trouble you and cause you to miss. And I know this is a phrase that we say, that have been said for as long as I've been alive, for generations, you know, the reason for the season. And I, and I believe that, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. I just don't want us to, I think sometimes we, like the, like the Christmas story, we get so familiar with it, we miss some of the key elements of it. We, we get so familiar with certain stories that we read over and over again, we, we miss some of the really God moments in those stories or in, in, in that scripture, in that text. We, we miss some very important things that I think God really has for us. And he says here, from now, don't, don't let anyone cause you any trouble that will cause you to miss the meaning of Christmas. What does that mean? Don't let anyone cause you any trouble. Don't let anybody take your attention off of what it should be on this year and every year. Not just at this time of year. We have Christmas trees. Aren't you all glad what I did? I didn't do any of it. I'm just kidding. I don't know where it came from. It just grew. I don't know. Don't let anything cause you to miss the true meaning of what this season is really all about. And what this season is really all about is that Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, He sent Jesus into the world to be born in the most lowliest of all places. Isn't that bizarre? 
you would think, I would think that he would come in royalty because he is royalty. But if he came in royalty, how would we relate to that? How would we know, how would he know what struggles we go through? You see, God works his own way. Scripture says this. He works in his own way, not in our ways. He works in his ways, in ways that we just simply don't understand. It doesn't make sense to us. But you see, that's the, that's the mystery of the gospel. It's not going to always make sense to us. And that's totally God. He sends his son, Jesus, in the most unlikely of places to the most unlikely of people. Why? Don't you think there's a deeper meaning there? I mean, yes, it was, it was prophesied in the Old Testament. But I think there's a deeper meaning there. So that you and I could always relate we know, I guess, that Jesus can always relate to what we are going through. Scripture says elsewhere that as Jesus grew and got older, he faced every temptation that was known to man. He went through everything that you and I would ever go through. Now, yes, the situations look differently today than they did then, obviously, but he faced every temptation that you and I face. He knows what you're going through. He can relate to what you're going through. And the beautiful thing is not only that he came, and it is beautiful that he came, but I think even the more beautiful thing is that he is still alive. Yes, he died on a cross. We know that. That's the Easter story, right? He died on a cross, but the good news is that wasn't the end. Three days later, he rose again. And the scripture tells us, and if, if you believe any part of scripture, then you have to believe all of scripture. Scripture tells us that when we gather together in his name, he is here with us. In fact, Jesus himself promises us in Matthew 28, at the end of Matthew, he, tell, he promises us this. Behold, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Jesus is saying, I'm, I'm going on. I've got, I've got business to do, but th don't, don't fear. Remember the angels told the shepherds not to be fearful. The angel told Mary not to be fearful. We didn't read that part, but he told Mary earlier on not to be fearful. An angel told Joseph, don't, don't be afraid. You see the common theme there? Fear. If an angel appears to me right now, right in the middle of the room, I'm going to be a little fearful. Right? It's just going to be a little fearful. Don't be afraid. Why? Because he is with us always. So no matter what we go through this season, and, and, and Christmas is a joyous time, but I'm aware it's a, it's a difficult time as well for people. Not, not in a spiritual sense, I don't mean that, but, but in, a, in, a, in a personal sense. Sometimes, you know, we, we spend Christmases without loved ones that we've had in the, in the past. Our, our interim pastor this morning said something to the effect that, you know, there may be an empty chair this year at your table at Christmas that wasn't empty last year. Because maybe a loved one has gone on to be with Christ. I, I wrote a thing yesterday, the other day. My mom's birthday was the 15th. My mom passed away in 1998. And I miss her every day. I, 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 literally. I, I don't know that can be overstated. But I, I think of her in some way every day. And I miss her every day. I do. And at Christmas time, man, I, I, I want her to, I'd love for her to be here to, to be with my, the boys and to, I, I would, man, I would give anything for that. But let me, I wouldn't want her to miss a moment of what she's been enjoying for the last 23 years. She's been enjoying heaven, eternity. Now, I miss her, 
every day. But not enough that I wanted to come back and miss what she's enjoying. I don't know what you're going through. And I don't know what this Christmas season holds for you. But just know, make room for Jesus this year. Because he's with you. Always. Even to the end of the age. He's here. Do we notice that? Or do we just ignore it? Like the people in the city of Bethlehem, that very first Christmas night. That very first night. They didn't miss it because they were disobedient or blatantly disobedient. At least it doesn't look that way. They missed it because they just weren't looking. They just ignored him. Make room for him. This year, make room for Jesus. So the question I would ask is just before we wrap up, we're going to wrap up on kind of a up, uplifting note tonight. What is it that causes you sometimes to get too busy and just miss those Christ encounters, those God encounters that you have? And you know what I'm talking about. We all have those. God places those things in our laps. He, he lays them right out there for us, and we just miss it sometimes. Sometimes we miss spending time with him. What is it that causes you to do that? I know what it is for me. What is it for you? Make room for him this year. Whatever it takes, make room for for Jesus this year at Christmas. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for our time to be here tonight. I, I know it's been a little different. I know the mood has been a little different. But Father, this is not a sad, somber moment. This is a joyous moment. Because we're here worshiping you. We are, we are singing praises to you. And, and we're worshiping you because your word tells us that you are here in our midst. You are right here with us. Lord, I pray that we do not miss any opportunity to be you to those around us. We don't miss any opportunity to spend time with you. I am so guilty of allowing things to get in my way with you, whether, whether it's a, a, a game or a show on TV, or, or just, a, I don't whatever it might be, a game on my phone, or something, whatever it is, I'm so guilty of missing those moments, and there's nothing wrong with any of that, except it causes me to miss moments with you. spending time with family and friends and opening presents and just gifts, whatever we do, whatever our traditions are, those are great. And I hope we all get to experience those. But Lord, I pray that none of it comes to the expense of spending and missing you. Spending time with you and missing, missing you. I hope, hope none of it causes us to miss Uh, by the way, Isaiah's going to be giving me guitar lessons. Uh, he didn't know that, but uh, he's going to be giving me guitar lessons. So, hey, we are so glad you're here with us and joined us online. Uh, let me uh, pray this over you. Remember, we do have a small group tomorrow night, our last one of the year. Um, we're on the last session of the Advent. We're looking at the Advent, which ends um, Friday. Okay, the Advent season does. Um, they pour on the 24th, so, but we have tomorrow night, 6.30, right here in the front room love to have you here and then we will be off for the well until the ninth right yes we have two weeks we're off uh, from, the, from here the well so and then we'll be back on the ninth but let me pray this over you uh, and then we will depart where you can hang out if you want um, just you don't have to go home but you gotta get out of here sometime let me pray
pray this over you. Lord, bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. We pray that the Lord lift up His countenance or His face upon you and give you peace. Above everything else, I hope that you have peace this Christmas season, that you can spend time with family and friends and loved ones, and that you don't 